By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And in today's episode, we are going to have a look at flying elementals and scary zombies. I am playing a mono red deck that wants to put earth elemental on a flying carpet, but more about that later in the deck tech section. And my opponent, Yoop, he is playing with zombies. So there are zombie masters, cabo ghouls, pestilence, just a lot of nastiness in his mono black zombie deck. And I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks. But before I jump into the deck tech section, I would first like to point out that as always, we have timestamps in this video. You can find them in the description below. They are a great help for you to kind of go through the video at your own pace and look at the sections that you want to look at first. For example, if you want to go to the game action, simply click on the timestamp marked MTG Games and that will take you straight to the action. In the description below, you will also find a really nice link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Uh, because we have our own Patreon. So if you want to support this channel, please check out patreon.com slash timmytalks for all the ins and outs and find out how you can support Timmy Talks and how you can support me continuing to make these videos for you. Okay, now that you're completely informed about what you can find in the description below, I guess it is time to continue with this video. We're going to start with the deck deck section. I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent, the Zombies. And here we see the deck of Yup Vak. So his strategy is pretty straightforward. He is playing zombies. And that means that, you know, he's of course playing with zombie master, two black and one to cast for this two, three creature that reads all your zombies gain swamp walk and have one black regenerate. So if you give all your creatures regeneration, obviously it's great to combine it with Neverneural's disc. So we see three Neverneural's discs in this deck, right? That kind of works because you blow up the disc, but all your zombies have regeneration because of zombie master. So you don't lose any creatures right? Um, but of course, Zombie Master does another thing as well. It also gives all the creatures Swamp Walk. So there are some cards in this deck that um, make swamps at the opponent's uh, side of the table, right? They turn the lands of the opponents into swamps. So we see uh, Evil Presence, for example. So one black for an enchant land that says target land is now a swamp. It's as simple as that. And of course, then when you've got Swamp Walkers, your zombies are unblockable and you can just deal a lot of damage. He's also playing with a card called Cyclopean Tomb. Beautiful card, four to cast, two and tap, and then you can turn any uh, non-swamp land into a swamp. That's basically what it does. It's just this super cool card that you don't see often. Love the art of Ansematics. Really excited to see it in this deck. Talking about cards you don't see often, we also have Knowledge Vault in this deck. Knowledge Vault, four to cast, two and tap, and it says take a card from the top of your library, and put it under Knowledge Vault, right? So it's basically an exile under Knowledge Vault. Then at any time in the game, you can sacrifice Knowledge Vault, and what happens then is you discard your hand, and you take all the cards that you've exiled with Knowledge Vault and put them into your hand. And you don't have to tap the Knowledge Vault to do this. So you, you can you can sack it also when it's tapped, and you can do it whenever. So this is, in my opinion, kind of a card that's a little bit underestimated. I think it's, it's quite good. The art is beautiful, so... Yeah, more people should play it. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Um, then we also have four Cabal Ghouls, which is quite cool. It's a 1-1 one -one creature from Arabian Nights that has this weird mechanic because what it does already happens before it's actually in play. So it's super weird. It reads, at the end of each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on the ghoul for each other creature that has died during this turn and was not regenerated. So... For example, you can use your Pestilence, wipe the entire board, like kill all the creatures, right? Then in your second main or after you've done that, you play your Cabo Ghoul. And then your Cabo Ghoul is a 1-1 one -one, and you start counting up at the end of your turn. Okay, how many creatures died this turn? And put those amount of plus one plus one counters on Cabo Ghoul. The Cabo Ghoul itself doesn't have to be in play at the moment when you're killing all these creatures. So it is it is just a super cool card with this weird wording and I'm a big fan. And I'm really excited to see four of these in the deck of Yoop. I'm, I think it's awesome. Uh, this card also has been upgraded to a zombie. So it's also a zombie in addition to its other types. So um, yeah, you know, this deck, it's actually looking pretty scary. Because, I mean, if he can just get his, his zombies out early, you know, get, get a zombie master, then he can start giving me some swamps and they're unblockable. He's going to kill me. If I'm going too fast, it's not a problem for this deck either. Because he's got... Uh, a disc and he can just blow up the board and start rebuilding again. So that's also not a big problem for him. So yeah, I think this um, this deck is looking pretty good. I'm also liking the two island of Vak Vaks, by the way, they're in the right top corner. But um, okay, this is the deck of my opponent, Yupvak, and now we're going to have a look at my deck, Flying Elementals. 
And here we see my deck of Flying Elementals. Now my deck Flying Elementals is built around two cards that I guess you don't see a lot of decks that build around those two cards. And that is a Gravity Sphere and Flying Carpet. Now Gravity Sphere is an enchant world from Legends that reads everything loses flying, right? So nothing is flying anymore. Now there's this thing in Magic in the rule set that's called layering. So when everything loses flying, I can give it flying after that. And that's where Flying Carpet comes in. So everything loses flying and then I use my Flying Carpet to give one of my creatures flying and fly in an attack because I'm the only one with flying creatures or a flying creature in this case. Uh, you know, it's unblockable and I can just deal some serious damage. So I'm just really looking forward to this. Now, this strategy takes some time. So that's why I'm playing with two mazes of if main. That's why I'm playing with wall of fires as well. You know, so th these cards are just in there to kind of buy me time to do silly things. And of course, I'm also playing with two jam day tomes to try to find my gravity sphere and my flying carpet if I don't have them yet. Now, a pretty cool plan B in my deck. Actually, I've got two plan B's. So I guess I've got a plan B and a plan C. Maybe let's start with the plan B. So plan B is built around Sword of the Ages, an artifact from a Legends. It's six to cast, it's huge. Comes into play tap. When it untaps, you can tap it and sack an X amount of creatures that I control. And then I can deal damage to my opponent equal to the power of these creatures. So for example, if I've got just a lot of fatties on the board, like fire elementals and earth elementals, I can sack them to my Sword of the Ages and deal a lot of damage. Now I'm really liking this card in combination with Wall of Fire because Wall of Fire is an 05 wall for one red, I can give it plus one plus O. So I can put a lot of red mana into my Wall of Fire, then sack it to the sword. So basically I've got kind of a Wall of Fireball you know, <laughs> which is, when you think about it, it's really, really cool. So that's kind of my plan B. So plan A is killing my opponents with flying creatures because he doesn't have any. Plan B is winning with Sword of the Ages. And then we've got like a plan C, which I guess is Mirror Universe. So if my opponent just keeps attacking me, I'm going to use my Mirror Universe, kind of swap, uh, you know, life totals. So I'm very high, hopefully my opponent's quite low and then I can kind of burn him out. You know, that's another strategy. So I've got three ways to victory which I think is pretty good. Um, I'm also playing with Fishers in this deck. The reason I'm pointing them out is that my opponent is playing with Island of Wak Wak and Fisher is my only way to destroy a land. So I probably have to focus those Fishers on the Island of Wak Wak uh, of my opponent because Island of Wak Wak, of course, makes a flying creature's power, uh, reduces it to zero, which is kind of a problem when you want to win with flying creatures, right? So yeah, so maybe my Fishers, I need to keep them for those islands of Vak Vak. But they're also, of course, great for creature removal. So we'll, ju we'll just have to see how things are going, whatever. Anyway, this is my deck. Uh, we've looked at the deck of my opponent, Yuvak. That means we're ready. Let's go to the matches. Game number one, here we go. So my opponent, Yup on the play, starting with a Swamp and a Pass turn. So he's playing Black Zombies and I'm playing the Flying Elementals deck. It's Mono Red with Flying Carpets. There is a Mishra's... Uh, factory here and a pass. So maybe next turn I can uh, put a little bit of pressure on Yoop or are we going to see... Ooh, what is that one? Is that an evil presence? Kind of hard to see. There's some glare on the uh, on the card. Yeah, that's an evil presence. So he's basically turning my my factory into a swamp here with the evil presence. Trying to find a place with no glare. There it is. <laughs> I have to say his camera quality is not the best at the moment. Hopefully they'll uh, improve as the game continues. So I'm going to turn exactly, I was looking for an evil presence probably in my binders. I'm turning my uh, factory into a swamp right now. That's a bit of a bummer also because it enables the swamp walk on the side of Yoop once he gets that going. Just playing a mountain and a pass. I don't really have any weapons against enchantments in my deck. There is another Swamp Tapping 2 here. Okay, there's a Walking Dead. So 1-1 one, one Zombie, 1 Black Regenerate from Legends. There is another Mountain Tapping 3. Are we going to see a Wall of Fire, for example? Playing with 4 of those, I believe. Yeah, there's a Wall of Fire. So an 5 Wall. And for 1 Red, I can give it a plus 1 plus 0. So I can use this as a nice blocker early game. Are we going to see a Zombie Master? Yep, there's a Zombie Master. So now the... Walking Dead gets Swamp Walk. That means I can no longer block it because I have a Swamp with that uh, Evil Presence Enchanted Land. So I'm going to drop to 19. This is exactly the game that you points to play. And this is a little bit problematic for me because, you know, my I'm going quite slow. That's kind of my strategy here. So that's why I'm playing with cards like Wall of Fire. So tapping 4. What am I going to do? Maybe Flying Carpet 
Doesn't help much, of course. Okay, clay statue. So clay statue is a 3-1 creature. I can pay 2 to regenerate it. And it's looking pretty vulnerable at the moment because I don't have the mana to regenerate it. So there's a little opening for Yoop to perhaps kill it if he's got like a drain life, for example. Tapping 3. Are we going to see a drain life? No, we're going to see another zombie master. This is a problem because now the zombie masters are giving each other swamp walk, which is a drag. So he's going to attack for 3. I'm going to drop to 16. That is a problem. So three damage a turn right now. If you can find a bad moon, I'm even going to sink deeper into the swamp. So I'm really in the tank here. I have to find a way out. I mean, a fisher buries a creature so I can at least take care of one of the zombie masters. That would save me two points of damage. Playing another factory. So usually the factories are quite good, but right now I'm so under pressure. What can I do? Playing a fire elemental. And that's it, I guess. No mana left anymore to attack with the clay statue because it cannot regenerate it. And of course, Yoop could regenerate his zombie master, so that would have been a pretty bad decision. There's another uh, zombie here, the Cyclopean Mummy. It's a 2-1. Again with Swamp Walk. So he's attacking here for 4. I'm going to drop to 12. And he's leaving his two zombies on blocking duty. Remember, they have regeneration because of the zombie master. So even if I attack with my full force, he can just block and he's not taking any damage. Well, I guess if I animate the factories, I can deal some damage. But my problem right now are the two zombie masters. I'm already on 12, going to take four more next turn, going to drop to eight. Okay, so at least look at this strip mine, destroying my own land so that they're no longer unblockable. I guess that's a way to get rid of evil presence. I didn't think of that. But uh, yeah, strip mining my own land. At least that's something. And that's gonna, you know, take some pressure off. If he attacks with everything, he can only get one damage in, but I don't think he'll do it, because on, on the crackback, I can deal much more damage. Playing a Nevenerals Disc. Ooh, another problem arises. This is brutal. Nev that Nev's Disc is gonna be a huge problem. When he pops the disc, he can regenerate his zombies, and he destroys all my creatures. So I'm gonna lose Wall of Fire... Uh, fire elemental of course I can regenerate my clay statue so at least that's something but it'll be a huge hit and I get to keep my factories of course if I don't animate them so an option for me now is kind of to do an alpha strike but I don't think I should because then I'm opening myself up I kind of want to force you to just you know use the disc and be done with it and I think I just have to pass turn and keep things open because I need the mana to regenerate the clay statue Yeah, exactly. Putting my hand down and three cards in hand passing the turn. So I'm just going to wait for Yoop to make his move. And then after that, I'm going to try to rebuild. I mean, this game, I've been under pressure from the start. It hasn't really been my game so far. And it's going to be tough to turn this around. I mean, one of the things I can hope for is maybe get my Mirror Universe and, and use my Mirror Universe at the right time. So look at this Yoop just passing turn, though. Not popping the disc. So I'm just finding another land. This is not really that bad for me because my deck is slow. So, I mean, if he's playing the waiting game, I can do that too. I can just wait. Find the right components in my hand to make my move. That's fine. And now he's going to pop the disc at the end of my turn. That makes sense because now I'm going to tap my own clay statue because I have to regenerate it. And then he can attack actually with, with his full force. Of course, I still have my Mishra's workshops that I can use as blockers. Remember, they can pump themselves so I can... Uh, for example, block the zombie masters with that and only take two damage. I would drop to ten. There is another swamp, so I'm I'm assuming he's just gonna attack. Remember, everything has regeneration because of the zombie masters. And zombie masters are also zombies, so they give each other regeneration and swamp walk as well. So he's attacking right now. Oh, disharmony! That is funny. That is funny. So he's gonna put regeneration shields on everything right now. I mean, this is in a way, it's a funny play, but it's not really going to help me that much. I can just steal like a zombie master and, 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 and block one of the zombie masters. Oh, interesting. I'm not doing that. Instead, I'm taking a smaller zombie to block a zombie master, still taking three. So I'm going to drop to nine. I could have done that differently and only taken two points of damage. Okay, finding a maze of if. Pretty happy with that, actually. Tapping two red. And casting a Felwer Stone, that's not going to do much. I really need a Mirror Universe, I feel, to kind of get back into this. And, 
you know, if I just take like one more hit with the zombie army, go to like six, for example, then after that, use a mirror universe, swap life totals, and then kind of find a way to deal that last six damage. I think that's my, my road to victory because I'm not going to win it without the mirror. I think I'm so far behind already. Two cards in hand. I think Yoop's got one card. And remember, if you can find another evil presence, I I'm toast. Right? Evil presence, Batmoon, and he can just deal a lot of damage. So let's wait and see. So he's going to draw a card for turn. What is he going to do? Picking up my hand again. Two cards in hand. Perhaps there's an instant in there. So he's counting. That's never a good sign. He's got seven damage on the board. He's attacking. So, I mean, I've got, I've got mace. I'm not really scared by this attack that much. So I can... Block. I guess I'm going to block the zombie master and I'm going to regenerate. Oh no, I'm going to animate both my factories. I'm going to block. I'm going to send one back. So I'm still going to take two damage. Going to drop to seven. I'm going to drop to six. Oh, of course, because the uh, Cyclopean mummy is a two one. I keep forgetting that. Oh, then it kind of makes sense what I did earlier. Yeah, so the Cyclopean mummy. And now he's playing um, the scavenging ghoul. That's such a funny creature. Again, it's been um, upgraded to a zombie. It's a 2-2. Two -two, and whenever a creature dies, you can put a ghoul token on it. And you can take a token off to give it regeneration. Tapping 6. Are we going to see... Oh, an Earth's Adventure. I was hoping for a Mirror Universe. I was really hoping. So Earth's Adventure is a 4-4 four -four creature from Antiquities. And you can pay 0. And then it gets minus 1, minus 1. And you can give it an ability. Like First Strike or Trample or Flying... But every time you do that, it gives itself minus one, minus one. So it's it's kind of tough, and it's six to cast. It's funny when I play this deck, whenever I tap six, people are like, oh, Sheevan's coming? No, 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 it's Urza's Adventure. It's <laughs> Don't worry. But Urza's Adventure works really well with Gravity Sphere. Because Gravity Sphere takes away all the flying, right? And with Urza's Adventure, I can give it minus one, minus one, and flying. So it becomes a three, three flyer, and I can deal some damage. That's kind of the idea. That's why it's in there. It's, it's, it's really for flavor as well. Yeah, I, th I mean, Yoop is probably going to attack here, right, with the zombie army. Why wouldn't he? I mean, I'm on six. I'm so low. Oh, Cyclopean Tomb. Oh, no. He can turn my maze into a swamp. Oh, no. He's turning my maze into a swamp. Oh, no. This is so bad. And I'll always creature that swamp walk and I die. That's it. That's it. I have to say, I do love it, Yoop. I mean, I love the fact that you're using your, your Cyclopean Tomb to kind of finish it and seal the deal. That's it. I'm dead, man. Game one. Yeah, cheers for you. Well done, Yoop. Well, well done. So we're going to shuffle up and uh, we're going to get ready for game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So I'm one game down. At least I'm on the play. Let's hope for some more luck. I mean, that uh, Cyclopean Tomb was just... Wow, that was super tough. Anyway, Swamp here by my opponent. Let's see what I can do. Playing a Mountain and a Pass. Another Swamp. Okay, there is a Cyclopean Mummy. So the 2-1. When it dies, it's removed from the game. Playing another Mountain, tapping 3. Are we going to see another Wall of Fire? I mean, Wall of Fire is, is, is good against these creature-heavy decks, as long as, of course, my opponent doesn't make any swamps on my side of the table and, you know, grants his creature Swamp Walk because then I'm in misery. Okay, there's a Cabo Ghoul. So that's that 1-1 one, one creature from Arabian Nights, and at the end of the turn, it gets a plus one, plus one counter for each creature that died that turn and did not regenerate. So there is a Mishra's Factory tapping four. Okay, finding my clay statue again. So maybe next turn I can start swinging in with my clay statue. Put a little bit of pressure here on uh, on Yoop. That's something I, I couldn't do in game one. I was just under a lot of pressure from him all the time. But we haven't seen an evil presence yet. We haven't seen a zombie master yet. So, so far it's kind of okay. So Yoop's got four swamps playing Nevenerals Disc. I mean, it's not great, but it's not the worst. If he gets a Zombie Master next turn, then it's really, uh, 
it's really getting problematic for me. So I'm going to tap five. What am I going to do? Play a Pyrotechnics. Interesting choice. Dealing two damage to him, dealing two points and attacking. I'm not sure if this is a good decision because now next turn he can pop the disc. Do I want him to use the disc? Like... I mean, I'm kind of now telling Yoop, you know, just use the disc. And I, yeah, that's what he's going to do. So kind of an odd move, but I don't know what else I have in hand. He's playing a uh, Walking Dead. At least now I can rebuild with the Nevenerals disc out of the way. Yeah, I've got a lot of fatties in hand probably. So I'm going to play the Earth Elemental, but remember the Walking Dead has a uh, regeneration so he can uh, simply block the earth elemental and regenerate two cards in hand still swamp number six Ooh, double bad moon that is badass so all black creatures get plus two plus two right now so his walking dead is a three three Tapping again. Okay, so I've got more big boys. There's another Earth Elemental. So Earth Elemental is a 4-5. So I guess starting next turn, I can I can just start attacking. Another Swamp. So Yoop is kind of stuck with, with Lance. Only one card in hand, though. Ooh, he's tapping everything. Are we going to see a Drain Life? Drain Life. Probably killing one of my Earth Elementals here. And he was, he's back on, on 20 again. That is so annoying. One of the things that I can do starting next turn is attacking with my Earth Elemental in my factory and just use my mace to take the creature out that's being blocked. Look at that, he's actually taking the damage here. I'm, I'm really surprised that he's taking the damage playing an all Abaras Carpet. A card from Legends, I can pay 5 and tap and then I don't take any damage from uh, non-flying creatures. But I'm surprised that Yup is taking the damage. Am I missing something here? Oh, of course, he tapped out, so he didn't have the mana to regenerate the uh, the Walking Dead. That's it. Because of that drain life earlier. Anyway, he's played out a second Walking Dead. Which is super annoying, because they're 3-3 three, three with regeneration. I need to find my Flying Carpet. Gravity Sphere? Okay, now I need my Flying Carpet, and I can kind of fly over his zombie army. Passing the turn here. There is another swamp. And in hindsight, I'm really happy that I killed those zombies earlier in the game or else he would have played out those bad moons and they would have become really, really big. Then again, I've got my all Abaris carpet to protect me from those creatures. Two cards in hand. And just passing the turn. And Yup is just stuck on Lance, really. So I think both of us are trying to find an opening. Not finding any so far. And just passing turns. I think for Yup it's going to be really tough because he needs to get rid of the Al Abar's carpet if he wants to actually deal some damage. Finding another factory. I'm really waiting for that flying carpet or for a Jam Day Tome to start drawing some more cards. I've got two Jam Day Tomes in the deck. And I mean, Yup can also. Deal some damage with cards like Pestilence, for example. And look at that. He's playing a Knowledge Vault and starting to use the Knowledge Vault. So two and tap, put the top card of your library in exile under Knowledge Vault. And then you can sack Knowledge Vault, discard your hand and get the cards that are on, under the Knowledge Vault. I mean, this game can take long because that Elbar's Carpet can save my ass, but it's going to be really difficult for me to, to get past those regeneration creatures. On the side of Yoop. Tapping a red. Okay, Soul Ring. Okay, that's not going to do anything. Two cards in hand still. Probably just going to pass. But the fact that I'm thinking so long must kind of indicate that I, maybe I have like a Burn Spell in hand or some other option options. Remember, I can use Disintegrate and Fisher to get rid of Regeneration creatures. So I do have some weapons against Regeneration, but I have to find it, of course. Sword of the Ages would also be quite nice right now. That's another way for me to win this uh, matchup. Looks like I'm going to do something tapping for. Sometimes I can get kind of impatient and do stupid stuff. So uh, is, is that what we're going to witness here? 
Tapping five, it seems. An earthquake. Okay, I'm going to play an earthquake for four. So that means he has to regenerate his creatures. And we're each going to take four points of damage. That means the... Exactly, the uh, Walking Dead are going to be tapped. So I can animate my factories and I can swing. I can deal eight points of damage. This is actually quite nice. Look at that. He's going to drop to four. Wow. This was actually a really good move. One of the cool things with regeneration is that uh, if your opponent has to regenerate, the creature becomes tapped. So that's also a way to kind of get your forces through. And I think this is a uh, strip mine. There's a lot of glare on it, but he can, of course, strip my, um, my mace. And I think he's probably going to sack his knowledge vault. Exactly. So he's going to take the cards, three cards from under the knowledge vault. And this is what I like about Knowledge Vault. You can pay two and tap, put an extra card under there, and then sack it, because you don't have to tap to sack it. Another Walking Dead. Wow. That is a fierce army. Oh, no. Nevenerl's Disc. Oh. That is not great. I mean, it's not the end. Yeah, it's kind of the end of the world, because he can destroy my Alabar's Carpet. And then he can start attacking with those huge... Well, he's also going to destroy his own bad moon. So it's, it's not the worst, but it is going to change the situation dramatically. At least I still have the maze, which he can destroy, by the way, with the strip. And I've after the two Mishra's factory. So it's not the end of the world, but I'm really hoping to kind of keep my, my permanence here. And it's, it's kind of a shame that I haven't found the flying carpet yet, because then it can show you flying carpet gravity sphere in action. Also finding a strip mine for myself. But it's it's not really great. I mean, Yup is playing with Island of Vakvak, Vak, so I guess I gotta keep the strip mine for that. Stripping my mace. But remember, we don't see each other's deck pictures, by the way, but we've played against each other a lot, so sometimes you kind of recognize each other's decks, I guess. But So I should know that he's playing with Island of Vakvak. Vak. Then again, I see so many decks. I, I, who knows? He stripped my maze, by the way, kind of showing that he wants to perhaps attack this turn. You know, he can just attack with, with everything. And maybe he wants me to animate one of the factories to use as a blocker because then he can use his Nevenerl's disc. So, oh, he's actually not attacking. I'm a little bit surprised. I was expecting him to maybe attack and then use his Nevenerl's disc in my end step or when I attack. Three cards in hand, passing the turn. He's going to pop the disc. Yeah, of course, I'm not going to play out anything. I'm not going to play into the disc. Also losing the soul ring, of course. I have to put that in a graveyard. Not sure why I'm not doing that. I'm sure. I'm sure I'll notice it somewhere, and I'll I'll put it in the in the graveyard. I'm I'm sure you will do that. Anyway, oh look at that, playing a zombie master and a Kabul ghoul. Luckily for me, he cast a Kabul ghoul after using his disc. You know, because he used a disc in my end step. So the Cabo Ghoul is not going to get any counters for the creatures that died because it's too long ago. Attacking now with his three Walking Dead. I'm actually using the Soul Ring right now. I shouldn't be using the Soul It should be gone. Soul Ring should be gone. It's an artifact. It's destroyed by the disc. Come on. Anyway, it doesn't matter because I had enough mana open for other stuff. But I, I can, can get, just get the Soul Ring out of there. It shouldn't be on the table. It's so funny, like, both of us are not noticing that that Sol Ring should be gone. Anyway, playing a Fire Elemental. It looks like Yup has gotten the upper hand on this match, uh, by the way, after um, successfully using the disc. He's able to attack. Oh, no! No, 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 no! So he wants to use the Evil Presence. It, what is he going to use it on? Yeah, of course, on a factory, of course. In response, I could still use the factory to pump my other factory and I can use my strip mine to destroy my land. So he is attacking with the Gubble Ghoul. I'm probably gonna... I'm not... What am I gonna do? Fisher? Oh, I'm gonna play a Fisher. Okay. So... I'm gonna play a Fisher on the Zombie Master. In response, Yup is gonna put the Regeneration Shield on the Gubble Ghoul. And I'm going to block the Cabo Ghoul on my Fire Elemental. And we're kind of discussing, I think, that Fisher buries creatures, so he cannot regenerate. 
Doesn't matter, by the way, because Zombie Master doesn't have regeneration. It doesn't give regeneration to itself, but like what you saw in game one, you can do that um, when you have two Zombie Masters in play because then they give each other regeneration. Tapping again my Soul Ring. That should be out of the match like a long time ago. Sorry, Yoop. Because it, do, it does kind of have an influence on the game because you just have two extra mana, which is kind of ridiculous, so. But I guess, I guess we're both missing it. it, it happens. Tapping three here, casting Wall of Fire. And of course, Kabogul got a counter because of the Zombie Master that died. That's pretty cool. I really like Kabogul. Such an interesting creature. He's playing another Kabogul. He's got four in his deck. They go together really well with Pestilence and Cross Like Neverrolls Disc. It's really nice to see the card in action. And we're kind of at a standstill situation at the moment. Tapping four here. This is, in a standstill situation, this is a winning card. I mean, JM Daytona can change the match. And Yoop is still in top decking mode, finding another Walking Dead. So he's got a full play set of Walking Deads there. And two Cobble Ghouls. Problem for him is, I mean, he can't do much with it because I've got the blockers. And now he's passing turn and I'm doing what he fears, which is drawing extra cards with my Jam Daytome. And I mean, that is going to grant me the victory. I'm pretty sure of it. Flying Car... Okay, now this is great. Finally, I can show you Flying Carpet in action. Giving my Fire Elemental flying and flying my way to victory in game number two. Yes! Happy! And you can see me with the fists. I'm just really happy when I get to use a card like Flying Carpet and it's actually useful. I see that as a personal victory. Anyway, it is 1-1 in game number two, and that means we're going to go to game number three. Game number three, here we go. So Yoop being on the play here, I guess that makes him a slight favorite, right, to win this match, because his deck is creature heavy, so that's good, you know, he can start casting zombies sooner, I guess. Um, then again, you know, these, these games tend to take quite long, and then maybe that one card could be an advantage for me. Anyway, we'll just have to see. There's a Cyclopean Mummy, 2-1. We've seen it before. When it dies, it's removed from the game. Isn't that funny, by the way, that back in the day, creatures had such a low power level that they were like, okay, if it's if it's two mana for 2-1, it has to have a drawback because it's in black. <laughs> I do like the flavor, though. It's a mummy, so it dies. I think they should have just made it one black. That would have been pretty cool. It would have seen, seen more play, definitely. And it would be great, even better in these zombie decks. Anyway, attack here. Zombie Master from Yoop. That is a problem for me. I mean, he's really finding those Zombie Masters. I mean, it makes sense. He's playing four of them, but still. Tapping four. I mean, I've played with decks sometimes where I play with like four Enchantresses and I just don't see them. It is super frustrating, by the way, when that happens. Uh, playing a Clay Statue card we've seen a lot in these games as well. I have to say the double mana cost for regeneration makes it quite hard for me to use the Clay Statue as much as I expect it to use, to use it, to use a regeneration ability. Another one. Okay, so now they're giving each other regeneration and swamp walk. The only good thing for me, I guess, is that Yoop is kind of missing his land drop here. So he doesn't have a swamp to kind of regenerate his zombies. He is attacking though. So offering a trade. I am not taking it. Interesting. Maybe I should have taken it. I don't know. Depends on what else I have in hand. Because if I tap out now again. Look at that. Attacking with the clay statue. And you've taken the damage now. Second main. Oh, I'm playing an Earthquake. That is pretty sweet. Oh, oh this is devastating. This Earthquake is devastating for you. Oh, man. This feels really good. This feels really good. Yeah, remove, remove that dangerous Cyclopean Mummy from the game, you. Do it. Anyway, this feels nice. And what I love about Earthquake is, uh, yes, it hurts me as well, but it also hurts my opponent. And usually you can kind of use that in your advantage. I love it. So here you can see Earthquake making a three for one for me. Well, I lost my, my clay statue also, of course. And there's a couple ghoul. And it's just a one one now. I mean, the best news for me here is that my opponent has lost two zombie masters and his deck really needs those zombie masters. Tapping four here, playing a GM Day Tome. So not finding a blocker, but the Tome is pretty good. It's gonna it's gonna get me some some answers. It's gonna find me a wall of fire or something to block the zombies. Ooh, this is a pretty good turn for you, Batmoon. Any zombie attacking with the 2-2. Gonna drop to 10. 
going to take my turn. What can I do? I mean, if I tap out to draw a card, it doesn't mean that I have to take more damage next turn. I'm going to go all the way down to six. I mean, if I have a blocker, I feel like I need to play it here. But I don't. All I can do is pass. Maybe I've got like a disharmony that could be a way out. Or no, I'm just taking the damage. Going to go down to six. That is bad news. Another couple ghoul. Oh, no. After that earthquake, I was pretty confident. But you managed to build up very quickly. And I'm just going way too slow. Okay, I'm playing a fissure here. What am I going to kill? Yeah, gonna kill one of the Cobble Ghouls, but now I'm giving plus one plus one to the other one, so it's now a 3-3. Three, three. Oh man. This is bad. Play a Mishra's Factory. At least that's a blocker. I can I can block the Walking Dead with it. Well I, no, because it cannot tap and pump itself yet, because it has summoning sickness. I kind of feel like I'm just missing one extra turn. Uh-oh, what is he going to do? Evil presence. Probably going to, yeah, going to evil presence my, my factory, of course. Of course he is. Oh, no, this is so bad. He's going to attack. I'm going to draw a card. No, I'm going to play another Fisher. Okay, so now I can kill the other Cobble Ghoul. And I'm going to go to four. Oh, man. So, Fisher is nice. The problem with Fisher is it's costing me five mana, meaning I cannot play a Fisher and draw a card at the same time. And that's basically what I need. I just need this momentum. I need kind of this free turn, but I'm not getting it, of course. Tapping two here. Another Felwer Stone. Tapping five. Oh, a Barra's Carpet. Yeah, but it's, maybe it would have even been better to just draw a card, I think. I'm, I mean, I'm going to drop to two. Oh, I'm so close. If he gets, if he has a drain life, drain life? Navanero's disc. Okay, that's, oh, that's also not good. That is, this is exciting here. I really, after that earthquake, I thought I was the man, you know, but. Oh, man, this is not good. I mean, I got Alabar's carpet. I can put myself on a carpet. I'm not taking any damage. That's what I'm doing, but remember, it's costing 5 mana. And again, I mean, I haven't used a Jam Day Tome a single time because I'm just under pressure all the time. It looks like he's going to use... Is he going to use the disc? Oh, and then he probably has some cards to play in the second main. So he's going to use the disc. Yeah, also the Evil Presence get, gets destroyed. Again, thank you. Finally putting my mana rocks away. Remember that uh, game where I kept the uh, Soul Ring? Anyway, oh, another evil presence and another zombie. This is so bad. It also feels really bad that I haven't used a GM Daytona a single time and now it's already destroyed. Earth Elemental. Okay, I'm doing what I can to stay in this match. I mean, you got to give me that. I mean, he's going to attack here. I'm going to go to one. Or does he have an answer to my Elemental because then I'm just dead. Or a Bad Moon, I'm dead. Or a Drain Life, I'm dead. Or a Pestilence, I'm dead. He's got a lot of ways to kill me. But he's not finding it. And if he attacks with both, I can block the mummy, but he's not attacking. He's just waiting for one of his outs. Tapping five again. There's a Fire Elemental. Now, do I have the guts to attack? No, I shouldn't, because he can just block and regenerate. That would be stupid. But at least I'm playing some creatures. But I'm just so far behind. I'm on two. This doesn't feel good. If he, if he can play a, a Zombie Master, I'm dead. He's got so many outs. Zombie Master, Drain Life, Pestilence. And those are just the cards that I can think of. I'm, I'm sure he's got some more stuff in his deck to kill me. I'm on two, you know. It's super low. Okay, tapping six. Sword of the Ages. Okay, okay, okay. This is something. Sword of the Ages is my plan B, right? So Sword of the Ages, six to cast, comes into play tapped. When it uh, untaps, you can tap it again, sack any amount of creatures. Oh, and it starts to make swamps on my side with the Cyclopean Tomb, by the way. But sack any amount of creatures and then deal damage equal to their power. There's a Headless Horseman. Also a zombie now, by the way. 
So it's kind of like Scave Zombies, but then from Legends. Beautiful art. It's going to make another swamp. Oh, man. So I'm kind of using my own, like, sleeveless swamps to kind of indicate what lands he has changed. Tapping four. Am I going to find something? A creature, please. Ooh, flying carpet. Tapping two. I'm going to make... Oh, I can make it flying. I can win the game. I can put him on eight. I can win it. Use the sword. Am I winning this? Am I winning this? Deal nine. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, sweet. I thought it was dead, to be honest. Maybe that's why I'm so happy. I didn't see this coming. Insane. 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 I love... That's why I love these cards. You don't see them often, but they're pretty good. And you can, you can win games with these cards. So please, guys, start playing Flying Carpet. Sword of the Ages, you see a little bit more often, but, you know, just start using it. What, what, a, what a great, what a great game. Wow, what, a, what an epic ending to that match. I played it so long ago. I honestly couldn't remember this ending. That's just fantastic. Um, I just, just to quote Hannibal from the A-Team, I love it when a plan comes together. And that's exactly what happened there. And But also remember that game two victory uh, of, my, uh, of my opponent, Joop, uh, was also memorable with the Cyclopean Tomb. It was wonderful. Anyway, I really enjoyed looking at this match and I hope you did too. Let me know in the comments below if you liked the match and also don't forget to like the video if you of course liked the video <laughs> you know but all these things are free and they really help the channel move forward and if you're new to the channel welcome here to timmy talks please take a moment to subscribe and hit that bell okay and now that that's all out of the way there's one last thing that i want to talk about and that is the timmy talks patreon page because i have my own patreon page and then uh, you can visit it and join it and actually become a patron of the channel and uh, it, it's really simple. All you have to do is click on the info card that's appearing right now. That will take you to patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And uh, there you can read all about how you can support the channel. Like I said, it already starts with $1 a month. You can pay through credit card, PayPal. It's super easy. You can pay for annual. You know, just pay for a year long if you want to. And there are some perks connected with that uh, patronage as well because you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord where you can meet all the other patrons. We've got 100 plus patrons at the moment. You can also join the Timmy Talks Tournament which are organized every I would say two three months I organize something online for you guys uh, just to thank the channel members and patrons so you can become a part of that and uh, the cool thing is you also get your name mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video that I make what end scroll this end scroll Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee.